In this video, I'll show you how to pull values from another table using Power BI commands. And we'll do it in terms of when you only need to match one column in a table, and also the second case where you need to match two or more columns in a table in order to find your information. I'll show this in the context of two different subjects. So one is human resources, and the second one is inventory, since I know that a lot of people who watch my videos come from these two areas. I'll start with the HR example. What you see on the screen is information from one table that's already been loaded into Power BI. And that is this table here called employee data. So what we have for each employee, we actually have all the job titles that we have inside the company. We've got the job families, the number of employees that are in each job category, and what their pay grade is. So these are the pay bands that we use. So based on the job title, I'd like to create a formula to pull in the job evaluation score. So the job evaluation score is just the number of points based on the responsibility of a particular job title, it goes through a calculation, and assigns a value to the position. So let's create a formula. And I'm just going to call it job evaluation score 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to look up a value in another table. And the table I want it to look in is the job evaluation score 1. And see that first column, that little helper text up there? It tells you that the first one is the result. So what do you actually want it to pass back? I want it to pass back the points. And the way I want it to pass the points back is that I want to match the job title in the job evaluation score table to the job title in my employee table. So once I do that, I can click here to add that to my table. And unfortunately, sometimes it defaults to sum, so if I tell it, nope, it's just a value. I don't want to actually add that up. What you can see is that we now have the job evaluation scores inside our displayed table. And obviously, we have certain blanks here. If it cannot find the value, it's going to return a blank for us. Now, you can actually avoid needing that formula if you connect these two tables with a Power BI relationship. So in your modeling section, you can go in here and tell Power BI that these two tables are related by the job title. But when you start to get really complicated, and it's not unusual for me to have dashboards that have 25 different tables in them, sometimes I don't actually want to create that connection if I only want to pull one value, and that's it. That's all I need for that entire dashboard. So I find this lookup value command to be quite useful. Now let's flip over to inventory for those people that find this to be a little more familiar. So suppose you have sent your people out to your warehouse area and they have counted your inventory. And they come back with this information here. So they've recorded the item number and for item 3358, they've come back and they've said, you know what, we've got six cases. Case for them is a six pack, plus we've got three units. So in total, we know that they've got six six packs plus three units. And for item 4758, you can see they've got 23 cases. And in this case, there are 12 in a case. And we've got four units as well. Now, suppose you're interested in knowing what is the total number of units that you have. And you don't want to keep going through and recalculating all these six packs and these 12 packs. Well, what we can actually do is I've got a table that has the QPC, so the quantity per case. And so in here, it's saying, you know, if, if it's in unit of measure equal to units, then it's one. Obviously, if it says four pack, the quantity is four, six pack is six, 12 pack is 12. Makes sense. Um, but obviously, in this data table, this is text. This is text. This is a number. So we need the numbers to be able to do our calculations. So in my table, I'm going to create a new column. And I'm going to create a formula for the count in units. Now the count in units is going to be the count that we have. So suppose we're doing this first line and I want to convert six six packs into units. So it's going to be that count times the quantity in the case, so our QPC. But we have to go create a formula and tell it, well I need to look up 
over in that QPC table, I want it to return the QPC. So again, that first column is your results column, so what you want it to pass back. And then I'm telling it I need to match that table by the unit of measure in the QPC table with the unit of measure in my inventory count. Okay, so our formula exists, so if we now add it to our display, you can see that six six packs is 36 units. You know, we have, um, let's see, 23 12 packs, 276 units, and now we know that for our inventory count, we actually have a total of 377 units. Now let's get a little more complicated and move into the case where you need to match two or more columns. So what I have in this inventory example, and I'll get back to the HR1 in just a second, is I have a table for the cost. And you can see that depending on what unit of measure you're using, we have a different cost. So for item 3358, and let me just sort here, it'll be easier to show you. So for item 3358, you know, if we were to have a four pack, the cost of the four pack is $15. And if it was in units, it was $4.50. So suppose we want to put a cost on these. We need to be able to match this table on both the item and the unit of measure. So let's create a formula for the cost. So we're essentially doing a lookup, but we need to go match two columns. So in Power BI, that actually means you're going to have to go calculate something. So I would like to calculate and I'm just going to say I want to calculate the average of the item cost. And the only reason I use an average is that for the calculate command, you have to have either like an average, a sum, a maximum. You can't just say, you know, bring back one column. So I want the item cost, but I want it to filter that table. So filter my cost table. such that the item cost item equals my inventory count item and, because I have a second condition, and I need the item cost unit of measure to equal my inventory count unit of measure. Okay. So now that we have that formula, we can put that into our table here. And it's giving us essentially, and keep in mind, this is the unit cost. So it's pulled over and it has said for 3358 in units, the cost is actually 450. And you'll see that when we do item 3358 in a six pack, it pulls back a blank for the cost because I don't have a definition of that item within that size, within a six pack. So let's head back to our HR example and see where in this situation we might need to match on two or more columns. So when we first did this, we just pulled over a value for a job evaluation score. We only matched on the job title. But if you look right here, we'll see that we have two job titles that are identical. They're both a financial analyst, but one is in level three and one is in level five. So it doesn't make sense that they would have exactly the same value. So the table we need is actually, and this is based on a real structure, we need to match on both the job title that's in the HRIS system and we need to match on the level. So let's create a formula for the new job evaluation score. So let's call it job evaluation score two. And we're gonna say, I would like to calculate the average job evaluation score number of points. And the one I want to pull back is I need to be able to filter that table such that 
the job evaluation score 2, job title, there we go, equals the job title that we have in our employee table, but that's not all. And we need to match the job evaluation pay grade to the pay grade that we have we go, pay grade in our employee table. So now when we pull that information in, we can see, we got a bit of a formatting thing here, so have one second. Let's say it's a whole number. Okay, so now when we pull the information in, we can see that for our finance analysts, it's actually gone and pulled the number of points that is in our table matching on both of those columns. Now, when we talked about just matching on one column, we said you could make a connection in the table to take care of that. When you get to two or more columns, you can only connect on one variable. So you can either use this calculate or there's a little bit of a trick that I'm going to show you. So what we can do is create our own unique identifier and I'm just going to call it unique ID and I'm going to concatenate, so just put together the strings of the job title in this table with the pay grade. And I'm just saying just stick these two pieces of text together. So then when we go take a look at our table you can see I've got business support analyst level 5. Don't worry about the fact that they're butt up against each other, that's quite okay. So we've got sort of a unique identifier in this table but we now need the same thing over in this table So again, create a unique ID, and it's going to be the same thing. We're going to concatenate R job title in the HRIS system and the pay grade. And now that we've done this, you could actually go into the modeling section of Power BI under Manage Relationships, and you can create a relationship between the employee table and say match that unique ID over to my job evaluation unique ID. So you can see we've got a good relationship that we could work with. So that works well when you're only matching two columns. It gets a, a little more cumbersome if you're going to match three or more columns. So I tend to use the calculate command uh, when I definitely get to like having to match three or more columns because it's not unusual for me to have examples where I have to match almost like five, five or higher.